This video is going to cover the placement and loading of uh, concrete beams. And rather than breaking it up into two videos, I'm just going to keep it as one and show you the, the process um, of loading a beam and then placing a beam in a couple different ways. So here I'm in a structural plan, a level two, and we're going to go to structure and beam. And you can see that there's only a W flange here. So what I need to do is go to load family. Again, you can go to insert and load family and get, get to this through the same process. Uh, but we need to navigate to the concrete, uh, concrete beam folder. So I'm in the English Imperial Library. Go ahead and scroll to the concrete frame, or sorry, structural framing. There's a concrete folder in there, and we're going to want to load the concrete rectangular beam family. Now, by default, we have two sizes, a 12 by 24 and a 16 by 32. These are actually pretty good starting sizes for schematic designs. They're 12 by 24 using a rule of uh, span over 20. That can span about 40 feet um, because it's two feet. Uh, and then 16 by 32 using a span over 15 uh, for something like a girder. Um, that means we can span about the same length. Now, um, I'm going to show you how to make a new beam type here. I'm going to make a 10 by 20, and the reason I want it to be 10 by 20 is um, because this is uh, what well, the, the dimensions should be about a 1 to 2 proportion, um, with the smaller dimension being the width and the larger dimension being the height. And that's a pretty good rule of thumb for your, your concrete design. The, the square gets the less efficient it is. Um, and that's not, you know, 100% true, but it's a good rule of thumb. Um, so here you can see I've duplicated and changed the name and then um, changed the, the B and H parameters. So here we have a 10 by 20 concrete uh, beam. And we can place this in a couple of different ways. Now we're in a structural plan and I ha you have to make sure that your detail level is set to at least medium. Um, so we can see these things and when we place it go ahead and um, snap to the center points of the beams or sorry of the columns and you'll see a little line kind of wants to drag here and then it will populate with the beam you can always change this later and that's probably what we'll, we'll, we will do um, so i suggest just choosing a beam type and then changing things later based on their spans um, so a 10 by 20 is a good starting point, or a 12 by 24 is a pretty good starting point as well. Um, you can copy these over, and you can copy multiple if you have the multiple button on. Um, you can even array these. So you can array from here to here, and you can choose like six. Um, and you can make, or you can make a beam system. And uh, for concrete, I would, I'm not going to really go into the beam system. I'm going to go into that more in, uh, for steel. But you want to make sure that you're framing out your whole, um, your whole structural grid, um, especially where there are openings, because these can't be spanned by structural elements. These need to be, um, there needs to be no structure within this area. Um, so I'm going to go back to beam here and. First, I'm going to make sure that basically the perimeter is dealt with. And you don't necessarily want to go over the columns because what that will do is you'll see this joins here. That's not really the problem. Um, you can split it. Here's the split. So split element. Uh, we want to split that element in half. And now we have two beams. But uh, if, we, if we just drag it from one side to another, you can see that the, the cut length is 23 feet, which is, let's go to annotate and align. You can see that this is about 25 feet. And we, we sucked out about 16 inches here and eight inches on either side. So it's 23 feet total length. But if we needed to change just this size, um, it's not efficient to, to do so. So you can either, Use the cut tool, or sorry, use the split tool by selecting the beam and, and selecting split element here. And you can see it wants to snap to this beam and it's showing me that uh, if I hover over it, it's gonna cut this structural framing. And then I get two beams here. Um, or I can just draw these elements in on their own. So if I get a structure beam and draw these in. 
Um, that's what I would probably do. There is another method if we go to structure beam and we use on grids, uh, we can select all of these grids and what it's going to do is it's going to populate based on where your columns are. So if you have these grid lines you can see that yeah these grid lines meet here but there's no column there so it's not going to populate a grid. It's literally just going to draw columns between these. And if I hit check here, um, you can see that it doesn't double populate where there are already beams. So that is a, a quick and easy method, but you might have to go through and change some of these things, right? If you don't necessarily need this beam or this beam, um, you're going to have to figure out uh, what to change. It's actually a pretty good uh, way to investigate where you do and you don't need structure. Because here you can see wherever this doesn't go past and there's no column, um, this is going to be a transfer beam, and so uh, it's, it's going to be somewhat inefficient. Um, and to make a very efficient structure, you know, on paper, um, you might want to try and eliminate those things to, to the best of your ability. Now, most, some of the time it's not completely possible, um, so that will, be, that will be worked out. Let's go to a structural 3D view here, and I can tile my windows so you can see them side by side. So here's the floor plan, and if I select a beam, you can see that it highlights in the other um, the other view. And what this will allow you to do is work side by side and then you can change the, the beam type and you can see how it's changing. Um, also, if you have a beam that uh, needs to be slightly adjusted, moved up and down, you can change its Z offset value here, say to negative two inches, you can see it just adjusts. But for concrete, uh, we actually have a homogeneous cast in place system. So all of the concrete beams and columns and floors will actually be absorbed into one sort of identity. Um, so you don't necessarily need to offset your concrete beams. Now when we get into steel beams, you will have to do that. And I'll probably have a demo for you um, that will show you how to do that. Um, but again, if we select a, an item here, uh, you can always push and pull it, and see how it changes. Um, or you can select an item in your 3D view and you can adjust um, that way if you, if you want.